As we know, every religion has its central message. Every religion has the central idea regarding rule, what it tends to communicate. And for Christianity, the central message can be found in today's uh, gospel reading, the answer that Jesus gave to the scholar of the law. When the scholar came to him and asked, which is the greatest commandment? Though the scholar set out to tempt or even to test the Lord, but at the bottom line of it is, he is asking for the essential element of those who believe, those who follow the Lord, what is expected of them. It is also interesting to know that devout Jews, Israelites, are expected to observe 613 letters of the law. So many. So that is why, you know, he wanted to know, out of this 613, which one is the greatest? Which one summarizes the whole thing? And I think for us, that may also apply. We have so many uh, laws, both in the Old Testament, the New Testament, some of the teachings of the church, in our everyday life, with so many things going on, we want to know what is the real thing? Which one do we believe? What summarizes all of these things going on? When we hear proclamation coming from uh, anywhere, and so in answering this uh, scholar of the law, Jesus was also giving us an answer that we can uh, use to help us, especially in this time that we have so many questions. And Jesus, as we know, was uh, a devout Jew. He observed and knows what is it to be a Jew. So he went back to the Old Testament and gave a definition of what the commandment is, borrowing from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. It is called Shema. Shema is, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God, and you shall love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And also to teach your children to observe the sin. So that is it, the Shema, the love of God going back to the Old Testament to summarize. And it, is, it makes sense for everyone, any religion, to have that love of God and, you know, for God is the greatest of all. That is the first commandment. But then he added something that made the scribes and the Pharisees nervous. This scholar of the law asked for one, but he gave him two. And he said, this second one is like the first. So the second one, going again back to the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus 19, to love your neighbor as yourself. This second is like this. Why would you say, um, why would Jesus talk about the love of neighbor and for him to say it is like the first one? I think an example might help us here. A story is told of, uh, couples that like going to opera. Accidentally, the husband said uh, he doesn't really like going to the opera, but he does go to the opera because uh, the wife loves it. And because he loves the wife, he goes to the opera. And the wife turned back to say, no, I don't like going to the opera. I thought you love it, and that is why I go to the opera. <laughs> so you see, and for that, they cancel their ticket for the season. So that applies the love of God and love of neighbor. That we love our neighbor because God, we love God, and God loves our neighbor as well. So the two go together similarly. For love of God and love of neighbor. But above all, we do not just love our neighbor because God loved them. But uh, the word of God tells us 
in first letter of John, chapter four, first come love. God is love. And we have so many descriptions of God's love. And because God loves us first, then we are mandated to love others. And of course, we can ask who is my neighbor, those close to us, those that I know, those I benefit from, or anyone around me. Jesus himself gave us a good example in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. You remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. That's a good place to start. Not those we choose, but anyone around us that we can show the love of God. The first reading gives us uh, practical examples of this love of neighbor. It talks about the migrants and refugees. God said, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you yourself was once an alien. And he talks about the widows and the orphans, those without husband and also those without a father. And for the poor who happen to lend money or other help to you, not to extort them. These are a few examples, but also we know in the Gospel of Matthew 25, the corporal works of mercy, how we are invited to show the love of God in our neighbor. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you offered me drinks. I was sick, you visited me. A prisoner, you came to see me. Naked, you clothed me. That is a perfect way of loving God. We cannot claim to love God without translating the same into love of our neighbor. Think about it, the idea of love of God is more a concept, it's more an expression of emotion, but how can we quantify that love of God if we do not spread it out to anyone around us? That would be making a false claim and today we see many, many ways the church has been living out this love of God in our society. Think about in schools, hospitals, orphanages, or through uh, Catholic charities and uh, the reliefs we offer during hurricane. These are ways to show God's love. Even sometimes to those we think that do not deserve to be loved. But because we love God, and these, our brothers and sisters, are God's children, and God loved them as well. And for that, we step out of our comfort zone to love them. Or even here in the parish, we have St. Vincent de Poor doing this wonderful job to love others, those we do not even know. That's a perfect way to describe the love of God. And at the end of the gospel, Jesus said, this whole, the, 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 the love of God and love of neighbor summarizes the whole thing of the, the law and the prophet. So in a way, it is summarizing the whole commandment of the law. Think about the 10 commandments, Exodus 20. The first three of the 10 commandments, the first tablet of the stone, has the law about love of God. That is, worship him alone, not take his name in vain, and to observe uh, his holy day. And on the other side, you have the seven that talks about or deal with love of neighbor. And what binds the two together is love. That is the summary of the rule. Or we can also use another idea to describe this love of God and love of neighbor. Using the idea of the cross, you can think about the vertical dimension of the cross and also the horizontal. The vertical that we love God and the horizontal means to put it out in our lives to those who do not look like us, to those who behave differently like us, to those who belong to other parties or to those 
who uh, we disagree with. So how do we uh, go on with all of that, the love of God and love of neighbor? So we sometimes are tempted to only love those around us. But today's readings invite us to go beyond. It is not a multiple choice question of this or that. It is both and how do we live it out? If we cannot love our neighbors that we see, how do we claim to love God? So my brothers and sisters, the question for you and I is, am I loving others to the extent that they feel that they are loved? And before that one, do I even love myself? And what is love? So in our world today, the world will be heading into a big bang without love. Without love, we are heading to destruction. What is love? St. Paul gives us a perfect example, or even definition if you like. In his letter to the Corinthians 13, if I can speak in the tongues of men and angels, and I do not have love, I'm just like a noisy gong. And if I have the gift of prophecy, or even faith, that moves mountain, and without love, I am nothing. And if I give away everything, and even allow myself to be burned, and I do not have love, I gain nothing. Why? For love is patient, kind, endures. Love does not take record of other people's mistake or wrongdoing, or even glories in other people's uh, mistakes or error. Rather, love forgives. Love forgives. You remember the passage in the scripture when Jesus asked, how many times can I forgive others? As often as possible. That is love. The society comes up with so many ideologies to divide us and to bring in hatred. That is the work of the evil one. So my brothers and sisters, at this time, I enjoin all of us never never to allow any politics or even to use politics as an excuse not to show love to others, even to those terrible people that we may disagree who are on the other side of the fence. Let nothing stop us from loving them. In the evening of life, according to St. John of the Cross, in the evening of life, we all will be judged by love alone. May God bless his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen.